<laughs> my friend is back. My old roommate, Patty. Yay. I lived with her for three years, I think. Two years, three years. Mm -hmm. She's back in from Thailand. Yes, I am. <laughs> it's been quite the year, quite the journey. 2020 in Thailand <laughs> to here? What, what's... <laughs> Is there a difference? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's quite a difference. Uh, I was living on a small island called Copenhagen, and uh, there was no lockdown, no masks required. Oh, wow. Basically, every all of the boats were shut down, so we were little, living in a little bubble. And so it was pretty surreal uh, to see the media's kind of story of what's happening and just to barely talk to people and hear different oh, perspectives. Wow but it to be completely, it felt like I was on a different planet, to be honest. Is um, that just through social media when you were obviously living in, gosh, oh, she's got great pictures and videos <laughs> of literally where they were living, but like Thailand news isn't reporting American news. Like you only get your American news from social media. Yeah, or? that was basically the only source I was getting it from. And I didn't really even tune into it too much. Uh, it was more stories from, Friends, but yeah, the, the Thai news was covering it, but we, I couldn't really under, understand it. Yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine Thai people giving a shit about what's happening in America. I could be wrong. I mean, I've never been there. Yeah, it happened a lot. The wave came a lot uh, later in Thailand, so everything kind of shut down. There was a big wave across Europe, and then Thailand was one of the last places to actually shut down. And mm. just now, recently, this week, they just got the tests. So actually, what's really interesting is they COVID's probably been there the whole time. Mm -hmm. And people have probably had it. But there haven't been tests. So it shows when there's less tests, there's less fear. So now that they have the tests, now they're closing everything down. My sister is still there. And uh, yeah, they're going to go on lockdown. But it's just because now they have the tests. So now they're in the know. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. But everybody was... That kind of brings us to what we're talking about. We're talking about holistic health and wellness and healing and all this stuff. Do you think people were, are, are very progressively healthy out there to where I don't know, the virus isn't mm -hmm. going to attack their immune system or make them feel weak or make them, oh, shit, I, I need to go to the hospital to then report it? I mean, I don't know. What kind of question that was? It was just <laughs> a good question. I don't know. It's, I do. I mean, I know. I get where you're, I get your question, and I do. I feel a lot of the actual like Thai people, Thai culture, they uh, not, are not really that health conscious on what they eat and what they consume. I would say, um, but a lot of the people on the island are very. It's a very conscious island where there's lots of yoga and ecstatic dance every Sunday, people dancing in nature, you yeah. have your feet on the earth every day, you're grounded, there's not a lot of electricity, you know, all around and really healthy, nourishing foods, people are breathing fresh air, so right. you really have all of the elements of nature to really support your healing and your health, and so I feel like relatively people, our, our immune system is pretty boosted there. Mm. Um, and there's only one case, I mean, this whole year, one case ever reported on the island, and the, and the woman was over it in a couple of days. So it was, oh just a, it was a different reality, for sure. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't like trying to get, I don't like getting too political on this open everything, but again, I want to be kind of just like a platform to promote wellness and healing. She has, what, you're a master instructor for Soma Breathwork? out there yeah. what does that entail what what do you do <laughs> well, I teach people how to breathe oh no 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 uh, it's so I actually to kind of go back it's kind of an interesting story I came into Soma because they really that's also part of what um, the practice that uh, Soma is but it's all about really coming back into your unique vibrational resonance uh, which is your we all have this, I feel like, see, soul seed within us of our something that really sparks us. And over time, over our life, we can fall off of our path and we can get consumed, get our attention kind of hijacked by the media, get our subconscious mind gets programmed into leading us down pathways in our life that don't necessarily fulfill us or, you know, make us happy and feel whole and complete and alive. And so 
uh, that was kind of a path that I had gone down, I would say. I was, uh, not to say that when we were living together, I wasn't feeling amazing yeah. and loved life. It was, the, it was an amazing life in that moment. Um, but my soul had a different story for me to write yeah. and I wasn't following, I wasn't writing that story. I wasn't following that path. And so eventually I had a heart attack and, uh, that really woke me up to a scare, which I think many people have scares. You know, it's either we, we learn and grow through crisis or through insight mm -hmm. as many people say. And that was kind of a growth point in my life through, through crisis. And, but it really awoken me to that I wanted to, it just felt this call to take a ma massive action. Like I, that I wasn't, there was something ready to emerge and I wasn't in the right direction. I wasn't moving my feet in the right direction. So we, I heard the invitation came to go to this magical island in Thailand for my sister and it was like everything, you know, in the universe, you know, when everything just kind of moves into your favor and it's like, here, put it on a golden platter. So mm -hmm. it absolutely was like a hell yes. Sell everything you own, go yeah. across the world, and everything kind of just kept being presented in such a way when I was there that, you know, I did yoga trainings, I did different breathwork trainings, meditation, and was still kind of uh, trying to, yeah, find what really resonated with, with me. And I didn't know what I was looking for, but I was very open and receptive and always asking, you know, what is, what is, yeah. you know, what am I here to do and how can I step into that? I'm here, I'm ready. I've never heard it before, but you said soul seed. Yeah. Did you have the soul seed prior to the heart attack or did you find the soul seed That's that it. you blossomed? You yeah. didn't even know you planted it. You mm. didn't even know the seed was there, but mm. you know. Yes. So I think our souls, we all have a soul seed and it's been planted before we came down. That's why we're here. Uh, and that's ready to be activated, but that's a choice. That's what human consciousness is over any other animals is we have the choice to activate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's some, you know, you can keep your, a farmer can keep his seeds in his pocket, you know, for one season, two season, three seasons. But whenever you plant the seeds and you nourish them with the right environment and the right substances, they're going to grow into the tree, the oak yes. tree, the corn, whatever, you know, yeah. the cherry tomatoes, you know, that, yeah. that, that intelligence in that seed will grow when it's nourished in the right way. So we can choose when we want to nourish our seed. And, uh, you know, when I was also, when I was 16, I you know, was diagnosed with lupus. So also had a really interesting health scare then and had a near death experience. Um, also, you know, had kidney failure. That was, I was suffering from kidney failure. My heart was failing. My it was affecting my brain. My I almost had to go on dialysis. And you know, I really lost. That was another pivotal point in my life where I was off path. But this was a major realignment. But and it could be seen as the worst experience of my life. The you know something that broke me. But it's always been the most empowering. You know up transformational experience of my life because it I had this this dream also in that one of the nights I was one of the sickest I was so tired of living I you know got down on my knees and I asked I didn't even know if there was what I believed in at that point I was so confused on 60 different medications on chemo and was just like exhausted I didn't mm. want to live anymore I was just like just help me or you know heal me or or take me because I'm done and I ended up having a really profound transcendental into the white light dream and that really connected me to this divine love that I feel that we really all are like underneath all the layers and that holds everything, holds all the fear, holds all the hate, that there's this blanket, there's this universal consciousness and that it has an energy and it has a really, it, it woke me in that moment that I had nothing to fear and that everything was, it just was this internal knowingness. There's no words to be spoken. It was spoken to my heart. And in that moment, I knew that I wanted to come back and that there was something I was here to share. That's what I felt. And so, yeah. uh, but that left an internal spark in me. That planted a seed. That awoke me that there was a seed there, that I was more than my physical body. Yeah. It was more than anything had ever, anyone that anyone had ever told me. And... Uh, that planted a seed that wasn't ready to be blossomed for, I think, until I had my heart attack. So I fell 
you know, I didn't know how to language it. Um, I ended up healing from lupus completely. I have never had another flare-up, and it's supposed to be an uh, incurable autoimmune disease that many people suffer with daily. And if any of the, your listeners have lupus, like, oh, you feel free to reach out to me at any time. I have so much information um, on how to heal naturally from that, but also with what I'll share with the breath work. But yeah. um, how'd you do all this? Yeah. <laughs> We'll we'll give you everything to get in contact with her at the end, but uh, yeah, what what happened? What was the first thing from this spiritual awakening? Because we we went from what lupus when you were a teenager to a heart attack yeah. very recently. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was I was thinking it almost seems like it takes near death experiences. Mm. I mean, I had one as well uh, with the kidney disease as well, but. Um, it almost seems like it takes that for us to rewaking. It's like that oh shit mm-hmm. moment where I need to make a change immediately yeah. or I'm going to keep going down this path yeah. of you know addiction or whatever it is. So it almost seems like you are destroying yourself unconsciously mm-hmm. and it takes something like that to make you conscious again to then start the newness, the new life, the yeah. and I mean, that's what you're doing. That's what I'm seeing you do, and you're doing it every single day, whether it be diet or, again, breath work or living in a place that's other only people could dream of living in. So I mean, you're doing something right. We just, <laughs> we just want to know how to do all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like an activation of this love for yourself again. I think that was like what – it's like I want to live. Like I love life, and for somewhere along the line, I forgot that. And – Uh, I forgot how to love myself. I forgot that I am love, you know, and I forgot this power that, like, we, that, you know, and I I think what happened in the dream after reflecting on it for many years is that the wave of energy or the knowingness of this love was so strong that when I awoke, it really did instantaneously reprogram my subconscious mind from fear of dying, from fear that I was never, that... You know, when someone tells you you have an auto, a incurable disease, there's so much fear, hopelessness, heaviness, and then phys- add the physical weight of an illness with that. And you're, how could, it's so hard to get better when you're in that low vibrational state consumed by all these drugs. And then you're, but the vision you have for perfect health is up here. So there's mm. a huge vibrational match between where you are and where you want to get to, you know. So uh, at that time, uh, I, you know, after that happened, all I wanted to do is I wanted to share this experience, but I didn't know because it had happened in a dream how I could help others and how I could help others, you know, heal themselves without telling them you have to have this, this dream, you know, because that wasn't going to help everyone. That was a unique experience for me. So there's always this deep yearning in me to find a way to be able to share how to have that same type of experience of self-recognition, awakening with others. And I think that's been my soul seed of like how to help others awaken to their truth, to their passion, to what inspires them to give hope, to, you know, to help raise their frequency because every frequency was so high after that. Mm -hmm. Now that I know what frequency is, the vibration of you know, our energy, our auric field, our, we have literally a torus of magnetic energy around us all the time. Our heart gives off this huge, you know, we're literally walking magnets. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we're in fear, our field is so small and contracted and our, you know, we're not in alignment. And so the things that we attract may not be in alignment. We're attracting a path that's crooked rather than straight towards, you know, maybe a vision that we have. So we need to clear that out of the way. And so when the first time I, I experienced Soma on the island, there's so many synchronicities that day that led me to this magical moonlight cinema on mm-hmm. the island, uh, put on some headphones, sacred geometry all over the screen, the flower of life, which you know, mm-hmm. that, that whole synchronicity. Is yeah, I thought about bringing that up, but ancient secrets of the flower of life that's all i want to say (laughs) yeah that's all wrapping back around as well yeah um but yeah the flower of life is up on the wall all the sacred geometry and put down these headphones and start breathing and just go into the same state that the dream took me to the state of just universal love crying pure bliss and in that moment i just knew that this was 
what I had always been looking for to share. One of the methods, the medicines that I could share that actually had a pathway, a gateway that people could follow and to help heal themselves on not just um, at a physical level, but an emotional level, a mental level, and a spiritual level. And really, mm. you know, that is the, that's what yoga, you know, is, is right. to find, create this inner union, this inner harmony, you know? Mm. So it's interesting because I did a sound healing uh, podcast a couple weeks ago, and we did the Tibetan bowls and the gong and all that. And I did another one recently I just dropped last week uh, about, like, the moon having a lot of energy. So all the waves it's you know, you know I'm not a I'm not a physicist or a psychologist <laughs> or anything like that but um, it almost seems like if we're giving off our heart is giving off something physiologically energetic is that what you could you could put that in with like the law of attraction or what you put out into the world you get back absolutely yeah you know, it's it's kind of a cool thing to think about and I mean, we could talk about that for years, but when you're in a low vibrational state, such as fear or jealousy or something like that, is that why people don't really want to be around you, or is that why, you know, you kind of get shunned, or is that why you kind of go to your corner and curl up in a ball and cry? It's like an inward energy mm -hmm. instead of an outward energy of That's love right. and and wanderlust and mm -hmm. support and affection and all the other, you know, good emotions that tie along with that. Yeah, absolutely. That's like exactly it. It's like we, yeah, we're going, we're following our energies like coming in. I, I, I mean, I haven't seen it visually, but there's a ton of research from heart math. And um, I actually just did a toning as part of a toning group that we toned every day for a month. And we wore the heart math, uh, uh, heart inner balance monitor, and it tracks your heart coherence and your, your, um, and over time, the higher your heart coherence gets, the more magnetic you get and the more easier it is to just live in a, 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 a state of love, to just be, to, then you start to see the world differently as well. Not only do more people want to magnetically get drawn to you and you draw in because you are radiating that out, that higher frequency, but you also, that changes your whole perception of, of your world. Mm -hmm. Like things that you may have, that one person will see, you can be with one Two people in the same room, they see the same thing, but based on their vib different vibrations, they're going to receive that information and see it and take action, create new beliefs, thoughts, you know, actions, and eventually life results, tra completely different trajectories in mm -hmm. life, you know, and over time, because you're seeing the world through a, an expanded lens versus yeah. anything's possible, that life is limitless versus everyone's out to get me, I'm terrified, and... And that's big for right now, you know, the media is projecting so much fear into our psyche and this, what's been happening this year, it's a hijacking of our attention and where we put our attention, you know, that's where our energy is going mm -hmm. and we need to call that back, you know, and have, and have different empowering practices that bring our energy back to us so we can call in what we actually want by raising our frequency. I just thought of this, but it's kind of interesting how you could put like energy levels on a scale from one to ten. Mm -hmm. Like you and I are vibing at a eight. We could get up to a ten. <laughs> yeah. We may. We may. Yeah. Hear soon. Yeah. Uh, but like, someone else in the same space and time could be like they they just found out their boyfriend cheated on them mm -hmm. or something. They're just like radiating at a negative one, yeah. you know, yeah. which is horrible. Like if you're going through that, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, but at the same time, it's just interesting. Cause I, I, I feel that shit from people. They don't even have to be doing anything. They'd be sitting at a bar with a mm. beer and I'm like, man, I got a rough day, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. or the, the girl that's, I don't know, got her sunglasses on or a hoodie on or I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where I'm even going with this, but it's, and I think it's external variable, right? Like this energy or this vibe, or again, people blame, this is why I feel this way. They point the finger. So an external variable comes in and destroys your internal environment, which is not good. The media, mm -hmm. I mean, we all do it. Again, again nobody's perfect. You're yeah. going to keep experiencing this for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. What we are doing, in my opinion, is we're, we're constantly building every single day 
hopefully going up a time curve, if you will, mm -hmm. of positivity, and we're constantly learning through the effects that, that we all experience, or that the external environment that we all experience, right? Like, Absolutely. I mean, I don't watch TV. The only thing I get from the media, or that I even know what's going on out there, is through social media, and... Because I, I know that I'm very energetic. Like, I, I, I don't, I just block that shit off. And I've got a YouTube video out about haters and naysayers and complainers and, you know, people that push you to the side or people that hate on you, people that troll you, whatever it is. Like, that's not the energy I want in my life. Mm -hmm. So I've just gotten good <laughs> at, at blocking that out, putting blinders on. I've never. I've never understood this statement more. Ignorance is bliss. I've never realized that until probably like in the past couple months. I don't know if that's a good thing. I've gotten thing? yelled at for not being as passionate about what's going on in politics, mm -hmm. something that, in my opinion, I feel like I can't mm -hmm. control. I can control my emotions. I can control the energy that I put out to you through the podcast. Mm -hmm. Or to you, seeing you for the yeah. first time, like, you could have walked in and I'm like, yeah, nah, <laughs> you know, just lay this shit on you. Yeah. And I would have brought down your high vibrational energy, and I don't want to do that. I just, I, I feel it, I see it, and, uh, mm. I mean, you know, it goes back to if, if your girlfriend or boyfriend cheated on you, it's happened to me before, I've been in that shitty vibrational state before, and I don't ever, I don't leave the house. So again, I, I we've all been there. It's just yeah. a matter of how do we how do we do it? It's a day day to day practice. Absolutely, it's a day to day practice, and I do think on some point on the trajectory that there comes a time where fear doesn't cripple you anymore, and even other people's lower vibrational energy it doesn't affect you anymore, less and less, because your field gets stronger and stronger. That you actually become the wave that affects them. So instead of a negative, a person that has a really low vibe kind of affecting our consciousness, we have such an elevated awareness, consciousness of ourselves, a degree of separation to be more of in a witnessing state to like see them as they are, understand them and be in our own so strongly that we actually impact others. Mm -hmm. And so that's like you think of people, you know, like Mother Teresa, are really empowering, inspiring people like Tony Robbins. Their field of passion and inspiration and their assurity in themselves, they've practiced so mm -hmm. much that it doesn't, Tony Robbins could be around the worst vibe person ever and he's going to bring that person up seven yeah. notches anytime. And it's like, but it does, it takes practice, it takes dedication, yeah. discipline, and discipline of your vibrational resonance of just being aware and, you know, what are the empowering practices that can help you come identify what's my core frequency, you know, where do I want to vibrate at? And that realizing that we can choose that, that we don't have to be subject to our environment. That's a perfect circle back around to the breath. Mm. We control our breath. Yes. And I've, I've talked about this for years, you guys have heard me. You see me do the crazy little cold plunges in the snow and the freezing <laughs> yeah. ice water. There's a physiology effect behind it. I probably can't explain it as well as her, but I practice Wim Hof breath work. Mm -hmm. You do Soma breath mm -hmm. work. And the idea behind Wim Hof, I'm, I'm curious to, just to compare them, is hyperoxygenating your body, mm -hmm. which increases red blood cell count, which prevents, I guess, prevents... Uh, further degeneration of certain things like it could be a spread of a virus or uh inflammation from just being playing sports or something mm -hmm. so that's my idea so when again when we're breath work in that's the energy that we're bringing into ourselves to hopefully be able to vibrate outward to the rest of the world wholeheartedly i do this every day mm -hmm. and that's why I, that's the most empowering thing i've found to then be able to get on and talk to you the way I do. Absolutely. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So I guess to piggyback off of that, what is Soma Breath to you? What's the physiological benefits? What's the mental mental benefits uh, from, from your expertise in that? So Naraj and Wim Hof are actually good friends. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, Naraj is the founder of Soma Breath. And... They're very in line with each other, very, uh, very, very similar. 
Uh, and I also, I love doing the Wim Hof technique and it's super empowering. And what you're doing is we're inducing a, a positive stress response on our body, so which makes us more resilient to stress. And over time, you know, when we create that stress in our inner world through the breath holds, you know, we are pushing past our comfort zone. Every time we go into the breath hold, first time you go into a breath hold, a breathless state, you know, you, your mind goes nuts. You know, you think you're going to die. All these fears arise. And when you learn and you keep continue to do it through practice, you know, you empower yourself because you realize that nothing's going to happen. And you see the mind, you watch the mind stories play out. You learn how to bring yourself into safety. And eventually it leads to a deep state of meditation deeper mm. and deeper. But it shows that it takes practice and time for our nervous system to adapt. So many of us right now are living in a chronic state of stress, especially this year of low grade stress uh, that maybe we don't even realize that our baseline norm every day is, is we're stressed. And so our, our sympathetic nervous system is always turned on. This is our fight or flight mode um, that really is only supposed to be activated when we're running from a tiger and bear. But today our tigers and bears are the news and the coronavirus and other just regular stresses of daily life. You know, and so we uh, are, we need to activate our, our natural, we have a natural re relax uh, response in our body, which is our parasympathetic nervous system. And we can do that by changing our breath. And so with the Wim Hof method and with Soma breath, you are, yeah, you're breathing in this you know, intelligent energy, prana, they call it prana, but that there's this electrified field of energy of infinite intelligence that's all around us. You can use visualization as well to imagine you're breathing this in because we are, and we are oxygenating our, our cells or bringing this into our lungs, like you, like you mentioned. And then through the, when you go into the breath hold, you actually change the internal chemistry of your being so that carbon dioxide levels, uh, go up and CO2 or oxygen goes down so that you can hold your breath for so much longer mm. than what you normally can because actually carbon dioxide is the molecule that triggers our response to breathe. So when you go into that state, all of the oxygen that you just brought in that was in, in now in the red blood cells gets pushed into all of our tissues and organs and, and cell and yeah, our tissues and organs where it's mostly needed and into our brain um, so that we can start to, our body can start to work its magic. And uh, this is why so many people that do Soma and have done Wim Hof experience, you know, healing on different levels. We're actually simulating, you know, high altitude training. Like if you're going into the Himalayan mountains, like we can actually simulate and induce that same type of state right within the comfort of our home, mm -hmm. which is super empowering and amazing. Yeah. So over time, we're actually increasing our oxygen, our body's ability to use oxygen more efficiently. So we breathe less, but use more ox oxygen more efficiently. And if mm. you notice, like the animals that breathe the fastest have the shortest life lifespan, and the animals mm. that breathe the slowest have the slow, deep breaths. They live the longest. Whoa. And also, you know, learn something. Yeah, if we're if we're constantly breathing, and our breath yeah. is erratic, our heartbeat is erratic, our brain waves are erratic, our thoughts are erratic. So it all comes back to our breath. And when we can change our breath and become conscious of our breath, we literally can change our life and change our reality. Yeah. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's much better than I would have explained it. That's perfect. Uh, what's your longest breath hold? Like almost four minutes. Really? Like, yeah, about three minutes. It may have been a little bit longer, but, uh, yeah, about four, four Mine was minutes. four minutes and 18 seconds. Wow. Yeah. I did that probably three weeks ago, which I mean, it's funny because, uh, this is what, I mean, she's probably been doing it a lot longer than I have. I've been doing it for probably since March, but cold plunges almost every day, cold showers almost every day. What she's saying is our, our body gets used to this you have to practice it you're getting out of your comfort zone so i've reached another level of like oh my body's gonna handle this it's really my it's a testament to my mind so i know a lot of people are like fuck that yeah. <laughs> they, they hit me up in the dms they're like you're fucking crazy no i'm not i'm just so used to it now it's just a mental overcoming the fear so i'm actually testing my mind a lot more than my body now 
And it's, it's kind of crazy because I have this thought of, um, I'm reading this book called You Are the Placebo by mm. Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yeah. And how he says, I'll try and summarize it, but he, again, he, I'm not a doctor or anything. <laughs> the mind is so powerful. Like in all clinical trials, people are given placebos, whether it's a shot of saline or a sugar pill. And they're said, hey, this is going to help you. Mm-hmm. And I can't really generalize it, but let's just say every clinical trial, like two thirds of patients get better Mm -hmm. from the placebo. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of the mind. The mind has a bunch of, it has every pharmacological and pharmaceutical medicine within it. So I start thinking when I'm doing these breathwork sessions and when I'm sitting in cold plunges, I'm like, this is healing my kidneys. Mm -hmm. This is healing my heart. I'm breathing like a fucking, I'm getting chased by a tiger, but you finally get out and you're like, oh my God, that was super empowering. So not only, you know, your body's getting what it needs, your mind is where it's at. And it all came from breath, Mm -hmm. the inspiration behind breath and and re, I guess, activating your parasympathetic nervous system. And again, I'll be talking about this for the rest of my life. So I'm a huge proponent. It's called biohacking yeah you are hacking into your biology absolutely by doing this and like when you put yourself in those type of situations like going into a freezing river you know or putting yourself you're literally putting yourself in a near-death experience Mm -hmm. so actually what the breath hold is also stimulating when you go in long enough is your body thinks it's gonna die but your mind is at a peaceful state so your body actually can release the dmt the tryptamines the oxytocin the dopamine, serotonin, all these feel-good hormones that are actually released Mm. when we're about to die. So the body and our stem cells also have been shown to come out of our bone marrow, and that's where stem cells have the ability to turn into anything to heal. And then you match that with the vision, you know, the power of the mind, like Joe Dispenza says, which I would say is the biggest differentiator with with from uh, Wim Hof to, to Soma breath is Soma has really encapsulated going deep into using music to help subdue the mind, drop into theta brainwave state, create rhythmical music to keep us in a smooth and consistent rhythm to create heart coherence, and then use affirmations and incantations while you're in that state to reprogram your subconscious mind because our mind is most malleable when we're in that state. And And we actually... People reach a state of neurosomatic bliss, which is the same state of if you reach when you're having an orgasm and you're at this peak state, your brain in an orgasm as well is at the most malleable state that you can seed in new, completely new belief systems and upgrade your programming. Mm-hmm. So you do this every day, you know, and that's a, the teaching a 21 day course. And that's the power of this 21 day course is because you're consistently raising your vibration every single day. You're harmonizing your nervous system, and every day you're reprogramming your subconscious mind, mm. seeding in a new belief system, so that by the end of that 21 days, you're a completely new person, because vibrationally you're a completely new person. Mentally yeah. you're a completely new person. So the way you're seeing, the way you're showing up in the world is completely different than the person that you were before. Yeah. So that's... Uh, and. So that's, I would say, the biggest difference between Soma and, and Wim Hof. And so many people that have done Wim Hof for years come to Soma and they're just, they feel like they want something, they just want to try something new. They love Wim Hof. I love Wim Hof. It's, it's amazing. Um, mm. It's just a little added. Uh, so I, I have literally written right over there, 21 days for healthy habits. And if I want a healthy habit, I have to write it down. And then I have to challenge myself. I got this from Kevin Hart, but... Who else is going to challenge you besides you? This whole life is a constant challenge in overcoming yourself and getting better. Yeah. So I think that really hit me once I had my health scare. I, I, I realized I didn't have anybody to take care of me. And holy shit, I've been doing this to myself, right? It's this complete shift of perspective. <laughs> and I thought I was a fucking heady, progressive, <laughs> very consciously aware human. No, clearly I was not. But again, I, I learned, learned my lesson. Now I'm even more hyper consciously aware, but uh, 21 days. So you and I have been doing breath work for a lot longer than that. But for the people that have no idea, have never started, like I was just intrigued. We're making real like biological and physiological and medical mm-hmm. shifts 
claims, mm -hmm. and we're not doctors, mm -hmm. but we can ex we can give you like you know a review on Yelp, except it's our personal life review how mm -hmm. this has completely changed our lives and perspectives. So, you know, breath work day one, that sucked. Maybe I I don't know. D day two, day three, holy shit, whoa! I'm I held my breath for two minutes. I remember the first time I got over two minutes. Now I've only gotten over four minutes twice. Why can't I get over four minutes every day? Why can't I hold my breath for 20 minutes? I think that's the whole fun challenge while also yeah. healing myself, also uh, challenging myself, overcoming my fear. I need to start really doing uh, music with it. So that sounds like an even more... Uh, and you love music. I love music. So you go on a journey. It's like yeah. you go on... And so many people also have done a lot of plant medicine. Actually, sometimes they say they've gone down into... Uh, you know, Peru and have done ayahuasca journeys and that the plants actually, you know, the spirit told them that their breath, you know, that this was their last journey and that they would find the same in the breath. Mm. And that is very, people have psychedelic visions. They have uh, anything from people have healed their eyesight. People have healed, reversed so many diseases. I mean, the so, so much group, Facebook group is now like 20,000 people and people are constantly sharing their healing and transformation stories on, you know, many different levels. And so it just really goes to show that anything's possible. It's just that we need to wake up and realize that we can heal ourselves. Yeah. I think it's fucking awesome. And again, through the book, uh, you are the placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza. We don't necessarily need any, anything that doctors are prescribing. Mm -hmm. That kind of blows my mind. And a lot of people are going to say, well, that's, that's just bullshit. But I think I'm getting convinced more by like really diving into holistic wellness. Not, not, Hey, take this for my illness. No, I'm going to prevent my fucking illness by doing daily things to benefit my wellness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a quote that goes along with that. It's like, if you don't take care of your wellness, you're going to treat your illness yeah. later on. Yeah. Something like that. I've heard that. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Absolutely. We have to learn how to take care of ourselves, you know. We've where have we given away our power, you know, in our life? And whether that's in codependency in relationships or to our doctors, then we just take what's given to us without asking. Mm. You know, we just trust. Un unwillingly, like without even asking, you know, without doing our own research. And not to say that every medication is harmful to your health. Some I know in certain situations, you know, in your dire situation, you may need it. But to also start to empower yourself. How and start to ask the questions and follow another path, you know, the search, another quest of who else is in my situation, whatever illness or dis-ease that someone is in. There's someone else on the planet in this global grid yep. of consciousness that has gone through your experience in a similar way from a, has a different perspective to share with you. And that's the empowerment of, you know, the digital age is that by a simple search, we can start down a whole nother rabbit hole of finding our own solutions, you know, and with just with that curiosity and being open and wanting and seeking and asking, you know, the right answers will come to us. We just have to not be close to them, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a perfect time to promote myself <laughs> open to everything, man. Yeah. I mean, that's literally why I'm doing this for you guys. Not only am I doing it for myself, but I'm so open to anything that gives bliss, happiness, love, perspective, because I don't know everything. And when I die, I'm not going to know even a 1% of what I am trying to get to know. Like, I, I just, the world's so big. Everybody has different perspectives. I'm going to go as far to say, like, nothing is right or wrong. Like, it's all again, perspective or perception, you know, someone who's drinking ayahuasca every single day in Peru, that's not my lifestyle, but it's not wrong. Yeah. Or the guy doing cocaine in LA and he has a heart attack at 40. I, I'm not going to judge him. That's it. That's his life. It's, it's the idea of like when I open a book that has, that talks about passion or I listen to a Tony Robbins speech mm -hmm. Or I listen to your story through another bit of breath work. I'm so curious about that, and I want to bring it into my life to become the best, highest vibrating frequency of myself that I can be for everybody else.
for myself clearly, but yeah. like I want to be able to give this knowledge to someone else Absolutely. or to inspire someone to I always say this believe in themselves yeah. that they can do whatever the hell they want. These limiting beliefs, I'm destroying them by doing the things that I need to do that have been proven in the past from mentors or people that have done this. So again, yes, you have to be open to these things in order to see a change. I'm also the guy that's like, if you're not moving forward, you're standing still. If you're standing still, you're moving backwards. It, <laughs> there are times where I, if I don't go out in nature once a week or once a month, <laughs> yeah. I feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. And I don't know why. I, can't, <laughs> I don't know why. But that's just one of my hobbies. Yeah, nature holds us. Nature, you know, we're either being consumed or we can be creative and create. That's why we're here, to create. We're constantly creating. Every moment, we're manifesting. Every mm -hmm. single moment. Just most of our lives, we're not conscious that we're manifesting. So we're manifesting stuff that we don't necessarily want. Yeah. And once you, like what you did when you started, started this podcast, open to everything, you know, doors... You start taking each of those steps. You mm -hmm. start saying yes to the things that terrify you instead of, you know, saying no and not letting it consume you anymore. But you actually elevate and you transcend your fear. You transmute your fear into your power. I was about to say, she, she took the word out of my mouth. The, the fear. I'm, I'm fearful every fucking day, man. But I've just gotten so used to change. I've gotten so used to overcoming fears that now I see that and I'm like a little hesitant, but I'm like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And and it doesn't stress me out. So maybe that's the breath work. Maybe that's this, yeah, it's just doing the necessary things where it all comes full circle. And it's like, this is life. Enjoy it. Take that as a challenge or an opportunity to show or prove to yourself that you're worthy. That's how I have worthiness. That's how I have confidence. It's yeah. constantly thinking outside the box and experimenting with, with myself. So life's a big game. Yeah, you know, it really it, is. <laughs> play it. Ah, oh, God, I could go so many different words. Play it safely. You know, maybe a, the kidney disease was a yellow card. Caution. Hey, man, we need you to do something different here. Yeah, we all need to. We all need to just find what lights us up. Whether that's doing ayahuasca in the jungle, or starting a podcast, or breathing you know what what gives you goosebumps you know what in life really you know inspires you sparks your curiosity mm. you know be curious to fuel your your life with things that empower you you know and also that how can I serve how can I give back because that's also a big thing for me I think when I switched to when we're in consuming mode you know we're so in this poor me state or in a victim kind of mentality and the moment that we switch to, you know, how can I serve others? How can I share? You know, what can I create? And you start to see, you know, this spark in others and how you're elevating others. That also, you know, is really nourishing for our soul, for anyone. Like whether we're making, whether that's smiling at someone in the grocery store or, mm -hmm. you know, how can we make, we start to seek and see moments, every moment in our day as a gift to, you know, help another person and, you know, radiate out you know, little, just be the change, you know, really. And that's, I think what you're doing with this podcast is you're giving, you're created a platform for people to share their voice, to share their story. And it's through stories that we ignite Dude, each other. Literally taking words out of my brain. And I didn't tell, I haven't seen her in years, man. It's crazy. <laughs> like I really just want to be the change that I wish to see. I'm out searching for this stuff. Therefore I might as well be it as well. Yeah. So crazy. I see, I see that in you. I always have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. God, we're going to we're gonna come back probably in a year or so and do another one. But yeah. uh, where, where can everybody find you? So I have two places. Uh, if you want to do a free online course that I just created, it's a seven-week course uh, with Soma Breath that teaches you the foundations. You can go to, it's called awakening.name. It's a new uh, mind, body, spirit uh, elevation platform that I'm uh, a part of with a friend of mine, and I just created a breathwork course on there. So you're, it's free to sign up and free to join the course. 
And then I'm also each month teaching the 21 day Soma Awakening journey. So if you have done a, the practice or are interested in doing a progressive practice that really builds for a 21 day period to reprogram your subconscious and elevate your love, your level of yeah. vibrational energy, then you can join me on, it's on soul sister tribe, uh, dot com and, uh, Wait, is it Soul Tribe Sisters? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> SoulTribeSisters.com. SoulTribeSisters.com. I know my URL. You know what's really funny is uh, that. <laughs> Secondly, this is this is a lifestyle. This is what she's doing for us, for the, the general public, for the world. And 21 days to form a habit. She's doing this for years and years and years. Same with me. And it's never too late to join in. And when you said subconscious reprogramming, my last episode, episode either 12 or 13, <laughs> go back to it. It's a guided meditation written by a hypnotherapist, read by me. So it was read in the first person, or like I read it in the first person. It's kind of like affirmations. I am this, I am powerful, blah, blah, blah. But I redid it and put it in the second person so that you can hear it for yourself and I'm on day eight of listening to that wow. subconscious reprogramming. It's kind of it's kind of weird too. I might as well just say it, but you know how we have our own thoughts. We talk to ourselves. We hear our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, I just read this to myself mm -hmm. in the second person. Mm -hmm. So when I listen to myself, mm -hmm. it's telling me yeah. you. <laughs> That shit is so it's powerful. powerful yeah. It's so powerful. But uh, yeah, I recorded that for you. Join us. Do it. I'm going to do it. That sounds awesome. It is the most powerful script I've ever heard, and I read it for you. Wow. And for you. And for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. So, cool. God. I wish we could have this <laughs> last five hours, because this is these are always our conversations. But until next time, yeah. appreciate you guys turning in. Thank you. Thanks, Eric.